Tonight, we report on the marijuana license applicants picked in a lottery to operate in Moses Lake and how volunteers helped make the city look a little nicer this weekend. So what's happening in sports, Bob? The regular season is winding down for high school spring sports. Stick around and I'll get you caught up on some of the action that took place over the weekend. Here's a glance at our weather center forecast. Hello everyone, this low pressure system impacting most of our region, but will it continue to impact our area? Well, I will have all the details for you coming up soon. I'm Alan Troop and we have all this and much more on i Fiber one News. From the iFiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is iFiber One News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Five businesses in Moses Lake were selected as candidates for marijuana retail licenses. Businesses were drawn randomly from lists of pre-approved applications for jurisdictions that have more applicants than the allotted licenses. Moses Lake was one of the 75 jurisdictions in the state requiring a retail license lottery to narrow the eligible businesses down from 1,174 applicants. The Washington State Liquor Control Board announced the Moses Lake businesses drawn during the lottery are Mary Jane's on Stratford Road, the Green Seed on Aspey Boulevard, Beg End on West Marina Drive, Dos Tesoros Smoke Shop on Wheeler Road, and Beg End on Kittleson Road. The business owners now undergo more extensive criminal background checks before two will receive the state licenses in July to sell recreational marijuana. Ephrata, Quincy, and Soap Lake are each allotted one marijuana retailer. If the number of candidates was equal to the allotments for the licenses or less, the state did not hold a lottery. The Moses Lake Lions were fundraising over the weekend to raise money to help people with their vision. Reporter Jeff Chu has the details. The little white cane that Grant County Lions Club members hand out for donations symbolizes big things in the way of eye and health care. Lions Clubs around the county were represented at storefronts and post offices last weekend for the annual Northwest Lions Foundation's White Cane Days. Bill Wallace, a Freight Alliance Club president and a member since 1983, described what White Cane Days is about. This particular day is a, a weekend which we collect money for sight and conservation for, for, the, for the people that can't uh, that have a, our low income people, we provide sight and hearing for those people. Dollars donated to club members go to a mobile clinic. The Lions Foundation also helps people who otherwise could not afford sight loss treatment. Donations can be made at any time to the Lions Club through Afreda Eye Care, 1070 Basin Street, Southwest. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber One News. Bob Byrne is seeking a third term as a Grant County PUD Commissioner. Byrne announced he is seeking another four-year term on the board. His present term ends in December. The Commissioner stated he is proud of the utility's progress during the past eight years and said the utility still needs to complete the requirements set by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's license to operate the two PUD dams. Since taking office, Byrne is working on restructuring irrigation rates, eliminating the irrigation seasonal minimum charge, and conducting two studies looking at how much it costs to serve different customers. Byrne said he is committed to continuing the expansion of the utility's fiber optic service after helping to restart the program. Grant PUD is releasing about 3,400 fish as part of a study on how well they travel past the dams. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is requiring the study as part of the PUD's license to operate the dam. The study is tracking juvenile steelhead and Chinook salmon as they move through the Priest Rapids and Wampum Dam bypasses. The utility is monitoring two changes. The first change is a newly installed fish bypass at Priest Rapids Dam, and the other is the lower water levels at the Wampum Dam Reservoir, according to the PUD. The roughly 200-foot-long bypass at the Priest Rapids Dam is open after three years of work. The utility converted three existing spillways into a slide for the salmon. 
PUD officials are also studying the effects of the low water level in the Columbia River uh, affect the fish. The utility dropped the water level behind Wampum Dam after discovering a crack on February 27th. The Soap Lake Yacht Club tried to hold a regatta, but the weekend weather changed their plans. Here with the details is Vivian Huang. The weather was not cooperating with the Soap Lake Yacht Club this weekend. We're down here putting on an event, a uh, uh, regatta for uh, 2014. We're kind of getting blown off the water at this point, but uh, we hope that the weather is going to calm down and we'll be able to get some of our kayaks and stand up paddle boards out in the water. People who came out for the opening regatta decided to stay off the lake and consoled themselves with a barbecue and potluck at West Beach Park. Rawls hopes the weather next year will be just as nice, but without the wind. For i One News, this is Vivian Huang. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this. DQ five buck lunch. I'm really into it. One thing I can't decide. Is it chicken strips, fries, and a drink with a free Sunday, or do you get a Sunday with free chicken strips, fries, and a drink? Trick question. Both answers are correct. Exactly, Sam. It's Fanonomics. Entree, fries, drink, plus a Sunday. The five buck lunch. Only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Hi, I'm Chuck Demirler, the new manager at Furniture West. Furniture West has been a part of the Moses Lake community for over 30 years. My team and I have expanded our inventory to meet our customers' needs. We have over 100 recliners in stock. We have a fantastic sleep center with dozens of mattress choices from the best brands in the business. Come see our great kids section with some of the most fun kids' furniture you will find anywhere. We are your source for power reclining furniture. Check out our new selection today at 117 West Broadway Avenue in Moses Lake. Hello everyone, I'm Chastelyn Rodriguez from your One News Weather Center, brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Gray skies prevail. There is a low pressure system coming through our way, bringing possibility of some showers, but those showers should diminish by the time it gets towards the Cascades. Now we are expecting seasonable temperatures throughout the week, finally hitting that 70 degree mark, which is the average for this time of year. Conditions improving by Thursday, however, that would be short lived. Thursday overnight, we are expecting the possibility of some showers and even thunderstorms Thursday night into Friday with a decrease in temperatures. I will have all the details for you at our extended forecast for the week. In the meantime, let's take a look at the Almanac within the past 24 hours, 65 degrees the high and the low in the lower 40s, 41 degrees. And for Moses Lake, 67 degrees the high and the low, 43. That's sun setting at 814 p.m. and right now outside your door your current temperature is 64 degrees mostly cloudy skies that do point around 38 degrees and those winds coming in from the west around 11 miles per hour and this low pressure system coming through bringing rain especially towards the south and even towards the east of us it will extend towards the east coast bringing rain and possibility of some thunderstorms and even mountain snow along the southern rockies and even towards the four corners now the system that will bring us a possibility of some showers on thursday overnight is this one right here that's coming through our way by thursday into the coastal area a little bit of cloud cover around our way and then thursday overnight into friday we may experience showers and even thunderstorms let's take a look at the temperatures around our coastal area 66 degrees partly cloudy skies for Olympia, the Yakima Valley in the 70s and towards the inland northwest, temperatures in the lower 60s and towards our Columbia Basin, temperatures from the upper 60s to the lower 70s, Moses Lake, 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies, as well as Royal City, Bridgeport, temperatures in the upper 60s, 68 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Let's take a look at our extended forecast for the week. Tuesday, 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies, and Wednesday, 71. On Thursday, 73, however, we are expecting showers overnight with a possibility of some thunderstorms Thursday into Friday with a decrease in temperatures on Friday. 
and that those temperatures will remain the same on Saturday. I apologize, mostly cloudy skies. And then Sunday, we return to the 70 degree mark and back to 73, hopefully by Monday, partly cloudy skies. This segment was brought to you by your Bud Clary Toyota dealer, Toyota Let's Go Places, and we'll be right back with sports. Thank you all for being with us. It's been called the most inspiring vehicle ever made, boasting a five-star safety rating and named as a top safety pick. It's also done more to help our environment than any other car in the world. It's Toyota's Prius. Now with your choice of the regular model, the larger Prius V, or the smaller Prius C. Saving fuel, reducing harmful CO2 emissions, and offered to you with excellent savings. Toyota's Prius family. Drive one today at any of your Inland Empire Toyota dealers. Toyota. Let's go places. Did you know that Little Chief's Child Care is expanding their Juniper Street location? This great new place across from Moses Lake Clinic is designed just for preschool and school-aged children. For over eight years, Little Chief's kids like me have found the love and attention every child needs to be healthy and happy. The grown-ups there have gone to college so they know how to make sure kids from 1 month to 12 years old have a great place to learn and play. Come join our growing Little Chief's tribe. Welcome back. I'm Bob Kirkpatrick with today's local sports. Moses Lake softball split a twin bill with Eastmont at Larson Field Friday. The Chiefs dominated game one of the doubleheader with the Wildcats, 13-3. Had it not been for two costly late errors that led to five unearned runs and a 5-4 loss in game two, Moses Lake would have pulled off the sweep. The Chiefs jumped out to an early 4-2 lead after one inning of play in the first contest on the strength of a two-run shot by Marnie Skinner and a two-run triple by Skyler Kimbrell. A two-run rally produced three runs for Moses Lake in the bottom of the second to make it 8-2, and the route was on. Haley Bishop led off the, uh, with a walk in the first inning of the nightcap, stole second, and came around to score to give Moses Lake a 1-0 lead. The Chiefs added a run in the bottom of the fourth to make it 2-0. Bishop went yard with a two-run shot in the top of the fifth to push the score to 4-0, and it looked like Moses Lake was well on the way to sweeping Eastmont. But a two-out rally, aided by an error, led to three unearned runs in the top of the six, and the Wildcats were right back in it for three. Eastmont took advantage of another Moses Lake error in the top of the seventh to bring two across the plate to win it. All five Wildcat runs were unearned. The split lands the 8-1 and one Chiefs into a tie for first with Wenatchee. Warden softball had its 11-game win streak snapped on the diamond in Connell Saturday. The Cougars dropped a close 7-5 contest in game one and then were dealt a 7-2 loss in the nightcap. The losses are the only two on the season for Warden and puts the Cougars at 6-2 in 1A SCAC East League play and 11-2 overall. Warden has a one-game lead over third place Riverview, whom the Cougars host a twin bill with on Tuesday. Francisco Alejandra scored three second-half goals to record the hat trick, but the Quincy Jacks came up short in a 4-3 shootout loss on the road in Tenasket Saturday. Quincy falls a 10-2 in Caribou Trail League play with the loss and has a slim one-game lead over Chelan. The Jacks and Goats butt heads in Quincy Tuesday in what has shaped up to be a game for all the marbles. A win for the Jacks seals the conference title. Moses Lake Baseball was looking to take two from the Wildcats when the Chiefs traveled to Eastmont for doubleheader action Friday and extend its win streak to 16 games. A sweep meant the Chiefs would claim the Big Nine Conference title, but Moses Lake split games with the Wildcats, taking the first 11-4 and dropping the second by the same 11-4 score. The Chiefs moved to 11-1 in the league standings with the split. Moses Lake has a two-game lead over Wenatchee and Eastmont with three games left in the regular season. Well, that's it for sports. We'll be right back after this. 
Ready for some classy, laid-back fun? Imbibe in Moses Lake is a place for you. Imbibe has a huge selection of your favorite wine and beer on tap from local brewers. We have kegs to go, and we can fill your growler. Remember that summertime is beer time. Come enjoy our live music on Fridays and make sure to reserve a spot for private parties. What are you waiting for? This is a place to enjoy your favorite drinks with your favorite people. Find us on 3rd Avenue in Moses Lake, Washington, or call us at 509-765-1119. Um... Ombudsman? Opsiman? No matter how you say it, Washington State's long-term care ombudsman program means real people helping real people. By advocating on behalf of our state's most vulnerable citizens, ombudsmen help ensure the health, safety, and welfare of our long-term care residents. By volunteering their time, they give a powerful voice to those who might never be heard. Washington State's Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. Real people helping real people. Our spotlight story tonight is about how the Moses Lake Museum and Arts Center is featuring art from Soap Lake. Reporter Jeff Chu has the details. The quirky little arts community of Soap Lake went on exhibit at Moses Lake Museum and Arts Center. The gallery exhibit called Side Stitched and In Between, Soap Lake Through the Lens and More is dedicated to the late Soap Lake arts advocate Brent Blake. It opened Friday night with great fanfare. Soap Lake photographer Kathy Kiefer, who curated the exhibit with artist Allison Gooding, says it seemed to be channeling Brent Blake's positive spirit and energy. I feel like there's a real presence of Brent Blake. I mean, if you, you pan and you see the, the you know, almost full-size image of him sitting in the chair, it's a black and white portrait that Gavin Sign took, but it's a really beautiful image of Brent. And then we have that blob from the, the, the mechanical, the piece from the mechanical lava lamp that was in Times Square um, for, I don't know how, how millions of people saw it. Here it is in this museum, you know, if you just look at, the eyes are watching, there's been a lot of eyes on that and, and still people can still see it today and, and just you know learn a little bit about Brent and his legacy. Soap Lake's own 91-year-old Bonnie Guitar was introduced by Soap Lake Mayor Raymond Gravel. She and her band Blue Indigo performed some of her favorites. Raffle tickets were sold for a colorful community-made quilt to raise money for the Brent Blake Scholarship Fund to benefit art students at Big Bend Community College. The scholarship fund was recently created in the name of Blake, who died last year of cancer. We wanted it to really represent Soap Lake. We wanted it to feel like Soap Lake, and we wanted people who, who artists in Soap Lake to have a part in it, to, to show their work. It was, it's a very inclusive show. It's really inclusive, and um, that's the way we wanted it. It feels, it feels like Soap Lake. Kiefer said she was happy with the outcome of the exhibit. It, it did, it's turned out beautifully. I'm Jeff Chu for i One News. We will be right back after this. Six years ago, my dad began having issues with headaches, sore throats, and constant fatigue. He tried treating the problem with over-the-counter medications and lots of caffeine. Finally, he talked to his doctor who confirmed our suspicions. Dad had sleep apnea. He didn't like the idea of using a CPAP, but after trying it one night, he was convinced. We found everything he needs for a much better quality of life at in-home medical. Game time. Papa's in the house. <laughs> wow, what's all this? I'm all about stats. For instance, have I got some numbers for you. Papa John's, a leader in online ordering. <laughs> you bet, Jim. You were the first pizza company to offer it nationwide. <laughs> What's the secret? Jim, it's the pizza. <laughs> to celebrate our online leadership, get Papa John's new double pepperoni and bacon pizza for just $12. Better ingredients, better pizza. And a better way to get it, papajohns.com. Moses Lake looks nicer today thanks to Vision 2020 and volunteers. Reporter Vivian Huang has the story. For 12 years, Vision 2020 has gathered groups of volunteers, taking to the streets for the annual Moses Lake citywide cleanup. Volunteers lined up behind the Porterhouse Steakhouse where vests, garbage bags, and route assignments were distributed. Cleanup route coordinator Alan Haru said the significance in the event lies in Vision 2020's dedication to the city and making it a better place. Basically, if you, as you're driving down the road, if you look around, 
there's a lot of litter, you know, and it's not necessarily people throwing things out of their cars, although that does happen a lot, but it's garbage cans that aren't covered, um, things that get knocked over, just the wind around here. Um, it'll move garbage from one place to another place, and uh, it all accumulates beside roads, in fences, in fields, and if somebody doesn't go out and pick that up, it sticks there, and it just doesn't look good. You know, it's a, a very bad image as people are driving towards town, and so what we try to do is make sure that uh, my focus as the, the route guy who handles where people are going is first, you know, the main interest is into Moses Lake, and then the streets that people are going to travel the most when they're visiting town. Uh, because what we want to do is put our best foot forward and try to make the image that we portray, you know, be as neat and tidy as we can. Haru also notes the areas in the city that need the most attention change constantly depending on where the wind blows. The, the fields behind the movie theater, as you have buildings and such in town, there's nothing that really stops the garbage till it hits the fields and then it sticks in the weeds. Um, the big wall up along Highway 17 on the south end gets a whole lot of garbage that uh, accumulates in the fence over there. Um, the fence along Highway 17 um, over by Lowe's. Uh, we'll get a lot in there because, you know, as things blow, it hits, it hits the field on the edge of the road and that's where it sticks. Now, if the wind had been blowing the other direction this week, it would be the other end of town that's getting it. So it really kind of depends. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. A man reportedly gave a bank teller his driver's license to cash a stolen check. Prosecutors charged Zane Berg, a 28-year-old Othello man, in Grant County Superior Court with attempted theft in the first degree, forgery, and possessing stolen property in the second degree. Berg reportedly walked into Chase Bank in Moses Lake on April 26th wanting to cash a $6,000 check. He allegedly handed the teller the check along with his driver's license and social security card. After determining the account did not have enough money, the tellers photocopied his information and Berg left the bank. Officials contacted the checking account holder who said they didn't know Berg, and the bank staff called the police. Berg allegedly denied knowing the check was stolen and told officers he received the check from a man to pay for his work. Berg allegedly couldn't tell officers the name of the man he worked for. In Northwest news, storms ripped through parts of Northwest Washington State yesterday, leaving behind a mess in some places. Cairo's Natasha Chen has a look at the damage in Snohomish County. Just after 4 o'clock, Amanda Arneson suddenly heard what sounded like an airplane when she looked out the window. At least as tall, if not taller than our house, which is two stories. Um, and it just looked like your typical Wizard of Oz type tornado. The weather service will come out to determine whether this was a tornado, funnel cloud, or just a really strong straight line storm. It just ripped, ripped right off the side of the house. Mm -hmm. It was enough to pull trees out of the ground and throw this trampoline across a yard. Push the barbecue almost off the deck and then as I grabbed my kids and ran into the middle of the living room, I noticed it picked up the kids' playhouse. That was sitting on this square. Yeah. So this was like on the side all in pieces in and it? the kids yeah. pick, pushed it back up as a team. Kids like this neighbor's son, Levi. Levi and the Arneson kids usually play in this, even when it rains. The adults are thankful they weren't playing house at the exact moment the storm came through. And neighbor Lance Chambers is glad a tree fell only on his shed and not on his house. This is the first time we've had trees come down with this magnitude. I think I might have to move if it continues to happen. And that's going to do it for us here at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.